This is volume one out of seven of Alfred Wainwright's Guides to the Lakeland Fells. It was first published in 1955 and you can still buy it today. In fact, this is the 50th anniversary edition. What attracted the public at the time and today, apart from their accuracy, is the fact that every page is painstakingly hand-drawn. And you'll get a clearer picture of this in a moment. So, Volume 1, covering the Eastern Fells, where are they? Well, they are the main massive going north of Ambleside, over Fairfield, Helvellyn to Clough Head, finishing at the A66 highway by Threlkeld in the shadow of Blencathra. So, in order to start things, and I'm not going to take you to all of the tops, in fact, I will take you to some other places in the area. But to get things started, I shall start at Place Fell. Now, that is not an eastern group fell. It is far eastern. Why? Well, I will explain in just a moment. So, sit tight for the moment. One of the best panoramas of the Eastern Fells is from the slopes of Place Fell. The view stretches northwards from Red Screes in the south, past Fairfield, Helvellyn, and onwards to Clough Head. The range is also well seen across Thelmere and from the Castlerigg Stone Circle just outside Keswick. The first fell researched by Wainwright was Dove Crack. If you are not familiar with Wainwright's unique style, here is a quick guide. Each chapter opens with a pen and ink drawing of the fell with its height in feet. Natural features are mentioned followed by a map based on an ordnance survey map out of copyright but updated by Wainwright. Over the next few pages he describes various routes of ascent, finishing with the summit and view, and if applicable, a description of ridge routes to neighbouring fells. Where space permits, further pen and ink drawings fill the pages and are highlights in themselves. The eastern fells are surrounded by Rydalwater, Grasmere and Ulswater, with Windermere to the south. It was whilst wandering lonely as a cloud along the shores of Ulswater that Wordsworth spotted those daffodils that fired his imagination and of course the rest is history. Nearby is Galbarrow Fell. Not particularly high, but with fantastic vistas of the lake, which Wainwright describes as a favourite playground and picnic area. But most visitors visit Era Force, especially photographers. There are lower and upper falls, and the National Trust have engineered some excellent paths that contour the steep riverbanks, allowing easy access to the falls, particularly the lower one, but there are many steps. Different shutter speeds can be used for a variety of effects, but if you want to have the place to yourself, come in winter, when the rewards are significantly increased, courtesy of, of course, weather and light. Fell walkers make a beeline for Helvellyn or Fairfield, but for the second time I follow in the footsteps of Wordsworth by climbing Nab Scar, Heron Pike and Stone Arthur, all of which overlook Grasmere. Nab Scar is the start or finish of the Fairfield Horseshoe, a ramble over the fells of more than 12 miles but I am doing just a bit. 
As height is gained, and initially it is quite steep, the views soon open up over Grasmere, and then to the south, well that is Windermere in the distance, the largest lake in England. Initially it was a bit hazy, impairing the clarity of views slightly, but upon reaching the higher elevation of Heron Pike it had cleared. Perhaps I had got above the heat haze. Wainwright is a little dismissive about Heron Pike. It is usually only climbed as part of the Fairfield Horseshoe, and the path can be seen stretching into the distance towards Fairfield. You won't find any herons, but Wainwright recommends the views, and I concur. I continue towards the next peak, Great Reek, but before reaching its summit I detoured on another path that took me to Stone Arthur, a fell separate from the main ridge. Stone Arthur, living up to its name, is easily recognised from Grasmere by its rocky tour. Wainwright is of the opinion that without this feature it would never have received a name, it being a spur of great rig, but any lack of identity is now made up by the glorious views. The craggy peak in the middle distance is Helm Crack, and just beyond the fell is Easdale, and that I will feature in the third video. It is backed by the great expanse of the central and southern fells that include the Langdales and Bowfell, some of which I will feature in future programs. Many years ago I completed the Fairfield Horseshoe and have climbed Fairfield and St. Sunday Crag on other occasions. The most memorable experiencing temperature inversion. Now that is when cloud fills the valleys, but the tops are clear. And believe you me, it is a photographer's dream. I started at Place Fell in the Far Eastern Fells. This is now featured in the next video in this series.